But if we could all light up a little bit more, then no one else would have to stand out as much. Because we all would. And then no one does. A hundred years from now, there won't be spiritual teachers anymore, as we know it. Hopefully. <laughs> be redundant. Be absolutely redundant. Spirituality will cease to exist. Because it's a man-made concept. It does not exist. We're just talking about life. We're just talking about creation. Spirituality is an antidote to having constricted our flow. Oh, are you a spiritual person by any chance? I've just discovered that I don't feel good all the time. And I want to explore what it's like to expand myself. Are you a spiritual person? Can I relate to you? That won't exist anymore. No, I'm not a spiritual person. That's just woo-woo. They're right. It is woo-woo. Spirituality does not exist. It is a man-made concept. It is for those that wish to escape. But also the view that there is no spirit, that there is no consciousness, that there is nothing more, is also incorrect. But spirituality is an antidote, temporarily necessary, to take us out of the compressed state, the contracted state, into the expanded state. Once you're in the expanded state, you see the inseparability of life and the brilliance of all that is. And then where is spirituality? Where is the spiritual person versus the non-spiritual being? Where is the one who is conscious versus the one that's somehow not conscious? It will cease to exist, hopefully. It will eventually. So when we all stand out, when we all shine, then no one stands up. And all will be brilliant in their own way, in their own right, and accepted and learned from, and everything will accelerate. Do not be afraid to shine. It is what this world needs. It's the best way to be a whistleblower on the ignorance of humanity. It's to shine. It doesn't mean you have to speak out necessarily as I do. You can keep quiet if you want to. But by radiating, you will say so much more than you ever can from a contracted state of being. Be happy no matter what. Show people that they have the option to redefine the neutral appearance of the configuration of molecules. That's all it is. Configuration of molecules, which is energy, which is consciousness. We can choose how we wish to respond to something all the time. What we wish to create, what we wish to generate, how we wish to feel, how we wish to perceive this moment. Show people they have this choice by being an embodiment of it. And don't long for instant manifestation of your amazing life because it keeps your pace slow. Why? Because you keep seeing it as not yet here. And it will have to respond to it not yet being here. I want instant manifestation. I want that thing now. In other words, I don't have it now. And life goes, oh, you don't have it now? Okay, you don't have it now. Whereas if you let go of that and start appreciating the curve that you're in, the upwards accelerating, gradual, graduating curve that you're in, of accelerating the pace of your gradual manifestation so that the story makes sense to you and you can actually enjoy every stage of it. And the more conscious you are of yourself, the more in alignment you are with yourself, the quicker you learn from every single second, the more you extract from every single second. The more unconscious you are, the more it takes years to learn what a conscious person learns in a single second. So the more you become conscious, then yes, the more your manifestation abilities, seemingly, although they're already at their perfect maximum capacity, will start to reflect that ability to accelerate, to instantly manifest things more and more quickly and frequently. But only because the one who more quickly manifests, not because they skip things, but because they learn quicker from what is, because they're more conscious of what is, not what is in the circumstantial sense, like, oh, this is, so I must feel this way. What is meaning, this shows up right now, it's a reflection of who I am. What do I want next? I want this next. Oh, this is a reflection of who I was. What does it teach me? Oh, mm, this does not feel, feel quite the way I thought it would feel. This, however, is amazing. Whoop, oh, mm, full amazingness here right now. Whoop, and then it reflects itself again. Oh, what does this reflect in me? Awesome. So the more consciously you learn, the more quickly within a similar seemingly lifespan reality you manifest. But not because you're skipping steps, but because you're learning more efficiently. You need less time to bring something to your attention. Does that make sense? You can't skip ahead of your own theme. You wouldn't want to skip ahead of your own theme. 
only the mind, rooted in the idea something is lacking now, thinks it desires that. But your true being desires to tell every single step of this story. How fun would it be to read a book and then to go from one page to the other and suddenly you notice you're missing a couple of scenes. It's like, wait, what? I have no context to understand this. It's not interesting anymore. Same is the case from the higher self point of view and from the personal consciousness point of view. You want to know what happens every step of your way, of your theme, no? Learn faster. Be more attentive, be more excited about what appears and what it shows you and how you wish to recreate what is and how you wish to recreate what is and how you wish to recreate what is and how you wish to feel regardless of what is and how you wish to feel regardless of what is and how you wish to feel regardless of what is. So that what it takes someone else to take 10 years to learn and express and manifest takes you two days. That is acceleration. It's not skipping ahead of yourself. It is learning more efficiently. A little side note to that, a little disclaimer. To the one that is in the accelerated state, two days will feel like two years. What a perfect way to practice patience by learning not to wait. Because if you're not waiting, you don't need patience. How can you not wait? By being in full joy regardless of what is. So what I'm saying is, yes, you'll accelerate. What takes someone else to pay attention to in two-year time spent because they're just so unconscious and not willing in that moment to face themselves, to make contact with their direct experience, their own creation. Those two days to you will feel like two years. So you'll still have the same sense of, when is this coming? When is this happening? It's been two hours. My new house hasn't arrived yet. What the F? Whereas someone else that learns at a pace of two years what you do in two days, they go like, man, you're moving fast. I didn't know this was possible. And you're like, what, fast? Well, I guess I can see that from your point of view. Oh yeah, awesome. Well, thank you. Now I appreciate my flow that much more. And voila, the house comes. Because you were in appreciation of your flow, you changed your state of being. So always be in appreciation as much as you can. Be in confidence as much as you can. Take everything as a sign that things are working out, that you are being amazing, that you are learning. Always enjoy your present learning curve by knowing that it's awesome. And then what will always be gradual will accelerate. And by the end of a single lifetime, you will have written such an epic story for yourself that even though 20 years ago you thought you turned it into a book, by then you would know where to start. But you'll know that the book has been written that the story has been told, and that all the evidence exists and is stored, and that many beings alongside you have learned from your story. In fact, all of creation has learned from your story. So the book has been written. Be the example. Be the expansion. Be the accelerated learning. Be your own point of attraction. Be your own creator. And everything else will benefit too. For after all, there is only one.